Today, I'm going to do something really brave and contradict the almighty Linus Sebastian. Linus has frequently claimed that these things, the humble appliance NAS, are pointless, and if you were smart, you'd build a PC and install a NAS-specific OS. Like, random example, the one he invested a quarter million dollars in. Hey, at least he actually discloses these things, unlike some people. So the middle ground is supposed to be something like a Synology, but honestly, I find A, the product itself kind of obtuse, and B, why am I paying like $700 for an Intel Atom? Yeah. With no proper f***ing expansion. Yeah. It's ridiculous, right? It's the Apple model. Pay way too much for the hardware, and you know what? To their credit, the software is super cool, but it's not perfect. And what the heck? I could be running this on like a $40 crap box that I picked up on Facebook Marketplace, not this thing. Now this isn't an attack on Linus, nor on his NAS investment. I actually watch and mostly enjoy LTT videos. I just want to offer another perspective and to demonstrate some real advantages that these tiny little NASes have and why they're so popular. Synology has been around since the year 2000, after all. I personally use two appliance NASes. And when I say appliance in this context, I mean it's designed to do one specific thing. Like how a kettle boils water, or a microwave ruins food. I personally use them for both Plex and for moving footage around the house when making a video. Like the one you're watching. I know not everyone runs a YouTube channel, so I'll focus on things that the average person will probably be interested in. Frequent viewers will remember that I already built a NAS from a mini PC, specifically this Celeron-based 2.5 gig thingy, before burying it in snow. But this isn't really a fair comparison to a Synology box since A, it doesn't have space for 3.5 inch drives, and B, it's super janky to actually set up thanks to the weirdly short power cord. A better comparison would be a Dell 7020 like this one. Dirt cheap, plentiful, expandable, and space for just two three and a half inch hard drives, just like the Synology. Well, there would be if I hadn't torn the cage out in a previous video. We'll just pretend this never happened. The motherboard on this Dell only has four SATA ports on it, and there's no support for NVMe and BIOS. So either you boot from an unreliable USB flash drive, like these two dead ones, Seriously, I swear I have a few of these die on me every year. Or you use up one of your SATA ports on your OS drive. So we have two devices. How do I actually benchmark them? They both have more than enough performance to saturate gigabit LAN. So the only things left are ease of use, price, power consumption. I'm going to roll size into ease of use. And frankly, this isn't even a question. The Dell has a volume of 25.7 liters, with the largest dimension being length at 42 centimeters. The Synology, on the other hand, is a mere 3.6 liters, with the longest dimension being only 23 centimeters long. It's basically the size of two SATA hard drives with a plastic shell wrapped around them. That's one seventh the volume for the same performance. It might not seem like that much, especially since I'm a single guy living in a house on my own. But if you have roommates, perhaps you live in a studio apartment, or even with your parents, that reduction in size is very significant. Now, of course, the whole reason Linus invested in a NAS company is that the existing options aren't easy to use or user-friendly. Personally, the simplest one I found is Open Media Vault, and even then it's not plug and play in the same way a Synology or similar is. Try walking your technologically illiterate parents through an ancient BIOS over the phone, and then describing the difference between file systems and shared folders, and you'll see what I mean. Add to that the fact that installing Plex on a Synology is as simple as downloading an app from the App Store, whereas on every single NAS OS you have to use Docker, which adds yet another roadblock for the average user. Like I said before, you and I might know how to use these things, but your average Joe doesn't, and I know most people don't want to take the time to learn. It is worth mentioning that Synology supports Docker too, so if you're married to it, no worries. I will concede Linus a point on the value of the hardware you're getting. Appliance NASes are expensive, especially when you get into the big ones. My QNAP is rack mounted, has 10 gig LAN, I upgraded the RAM to 16 gigs and it caches data to an M.2 SSD. That's pretty baller as NASes go, and the price reflects that at $660 with no drives. But since Linus brought up Facebook Marketplace crap, I'm going to assume my Dell 7020 is worth about 50 bucks. 
and a NAS like this is worth maybe 100 used or 250 brand new. It sounds like a slam dunk, given the Dell has an i5 and the Synology has a Marvel Armada XP MV7823-0. Whatever the heck that is. But just wait till you see the power consumption I measured on this kilowatt. Running Open Media Vault, the Dell draws 30 watts at idle, which is about the same as this fan. Whereas the Synology draws just 4 watts, or less than half of that single LED strip that's behind me. I'm measuring idle power draw here, since these devices will be idle for 99% of the time. That means to run these in Colorado, where I live, it would cost me $6 to power the Synology all year, whereas the Dell would cost me almost $45. Even worse, in the UK, where I grew up, where power is on average 32 pence per kilowatt hour, the Dell's running costs go up to 84 pounds per year. That means even if it cost one-fifth the price of the Synology, factoring in running costs makes even a brand new Synology pull ahead in value in just three years. And these devices are meant to run for a lot longer than three years. You may have noticed that this is a DS214, or 214 I guess. I bought it in 2014, and I've been using it for nine years continuously. It's still getting software updates too. Not to mention the warranty you get. This isn't my first Synology. Almost as soon as I got the first one in 2014, I plugged 48 volts into it by accident and blew it up. I contacted support, and they just sent me another one, with no questions asked. What happens if your Facebook crap box blows up because there are metal shavings in the power supply? Hmm? I'm not going to talk about drives. In fact, for the power use calculations, I moved the same two drives between the two devices, the Seagate 5 terabyte ones. If you're a baller, you can afford 22 terabyte drives for your NAS, but I'm not rich, nor do I get free stuff from vendors, so I've always just scavenged drives from all over the place. But now we get on to extra features. You may recognize this bathroom cabinet from a previous video. It has two CCTV cameras screwed into it. And if I open up my app here, oh, look at that. Your Synology can also run a CCTV NVR at the same time as streaming a 32 gigabyte 4K Blu-ray rip to the TV back there. Again, there is software that you can run via Docker that will do the same but it's complex to set up and doesn't work nearly as smoothly or reliably as surveillance station on the Synology. I just want to make it abundantly clear. This is a real demo, by the way. The Synology is back up in its spot in my rack. This is a 2014 Synology playing a 4K Blu-ray on Plex and recording CCTV footage simultaneously. It's only got a dual core ARM chip for goodness sake. Oh, well, now that I've mentioned it, what does Linus use for CCTV, I wonder? Oh, he uses $300 to $500 appliance NVRs from Ubiquiti, which use CPU cores from eight-year-old smartphones. Huh. And so the middle ground is supposed to be something like a Ubiquiti NVR, but honestly, I find it A, the product itself is kind of obtuse, and B, why am I paying like $500 for a quad-core ARM Cortex-A57? Yeah, with no expansion. It's ridiculous that the only officially supported cameras are also made by Ubiquiti. It's the Apple model. Pay way too much for the hardware, and you know what? To their credit, the software is super cool. But it's not perfect, and what the heck? I could be running CCTV software like Milestone X-Protect on a $40 crap box that I picked up on Facebook Marketplace. Now, I'm being facetious, of course, but did you choose an appliance NVR perhaps because you value the specific design choices they made and support they provide on this reliable, single-use machine. Or perhaps because it's a compact 1 or U2 design that integrates well into your setup. That does sound familiar. I just can't place it, though. Okay, I'll stop being flippant. I will try Linus's NAS software when it's available, and I'll probably make a video too if I can rope in one of my less tech-savvy relatives. I said relatives, not friends. I don't have any friends. But my relatives can't get rid of me. Stick around if you like this. I have a ton of videos and most of them don't even mention Linus. I'll see you next time.